Cigarillo. Der Mann. Das Cigarillo. Das Cigarillo, der Mann, das Cigarillo, Dannemann. Cigarillo. Who am I? Uh, I'm DJ Outlaw. I'm with the uh, Almighty Cold Crush Brothers. My boy Tony Tony would have been here, but he had something to do. So I'm going to go along and do it without him. Uh, also DJ with Luke down in Miami. Also Prince Personal DJ. And I'm one of the biggest beat collectors on the East Coast. I have probably, me and my boy, I probably have over a million records. I got started just in Miami, for a lot of Dale. North Carolina, 500 boxes in my mom's basement, Jersey, yo, and then we got eight that about 80,000 records in this one bedroom apartment. So I got records. <laughs> when did you start to collect? 77. 77. I was born in Bensonhurst. I'll give you a short story. Moved, uh, when I was younger, I moved to the projects on Northern Avenue. I see these kids walk around with boxes, and they had this other type of music that I didn't hear on the radio. So I'm like, hey, what the fuck is this? So I went up to one of my boys, and he said, yo, this is MC. And I said, yo, why can't I get some of that? He goes, yo, you can buy this tape. So I bought the tape off him, went upstairs. So I didn't know some of my other boys were in the crew, because I hung out with all the cats. So I kind of went with the crew and I wanted to be an MC. But I had a lisp. So every time they rewind the tape, my boy said, Yo, you sound fly, but we can't think what the hell are you saying? We gotta pick another hobby. So I went to DJ. So I went to practice. Started cutting it up, it was all beat. So the Bobby, my boy Bobby said, yo, come to my house later. He gave me 10 records. I remember it. I knocked on the door. He stuck his head out, closed the door, came back with 10 records. So he said, yo, don't come back until you cut the shit on B for the MC. So I went home, did my Bob's record player, came to Staten Island, I lived in Brooklyn, came to Staten Island, got my mom, grandma's stereo, I had a paper out. My boy said, yo, you had flight D this one time. You had clothes. I said, yo, you get all this shit. He goes, yo, I told told boss, man, I got jacked. So I tried that shit. I got, he said, yo, he said, fuck it. You didn't, you know, he knew I stole the money. So he fired me, but I had money. I bought me a mixer. And from there on, I started DJing, started collecting, you know, records and stuff. And then I moved to Miami in 81 and that took me from the bottom of the heat to the top of the because I had records you know good times bounce you know bounce rock skate roll heartbeat you know love is a message I was a god down there and then I met some other guys flex down there my boy Sebastian I joined the crew blah 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 and then here I'm now I like stuff like this. This is uh, a Waizu uh, yeah, situation. It's a remake. Somebody did. Kind of hot, kind of funky. More on the R&B side. Actually, I got this from Dan the Beatman. Yeah, Chicago. <laughs> Das 
Cigarillo. This is hot. Bannerman. Pat Bam picture disc. This is hot. Pat. Where do you get inspired uh, for, for new records? Do you go to clubs or do you yeah, have I listening sessions with your friends or what? Well, you know, with the older cats, Bam and Tone and, you know, all these Jazzy J, you know, to get new stuff, you always had to go to stores and listen, right? So, you had a you had to have patience to go into the record store, pick up a stack, and listen to them. You know, and, and that's a lot of time because, you know, maybe out of a thousand records, you might find one. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, you go from 10,000 records and you don't find nothing. But, you know, but when you do, you feel good that you found something. And you found something that, you know, you didn't know. A lot of people say, yo, I discovered it's not. It, 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 people know about it, you just, you didn't know about it, you know? Other cats are playing it. There's a lot of cats, you know, like on the West Coast, like Cut Camus, Shadow. Yo, it, you know, it's amazing how big our record collections are. And, you know, maybe 40% of it we both have, and then 60% of it is all stuff that, you know, we don't have. And that that's the incredible thing. You know, it's like... I know cats that have a lot of records and, you know, I have 40%, they'll have 40% of what I have, 45, whatever. And then the rest is all new crap that we never heard of, you know. You just can't be greedy in this game because you're greedy, you want to keep it all to yourself. And to me, music is to be played and enjoyed to everybody, you know what I'm saying? That's why you do it. You play music to, for it to everybody here. You know, I have so much stuff when people come out, I'm glad that you want to know. Because you're interested in, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, it's a thousand dollar record, or it's a hundred dollar record, or it's a twenty dollar record. You know, and you know, new stores up here like Big City, A1. You know, you know, uh, the uh, record store on 12th Street, Academy, Academy Records. Uh. You know, there's a bunch of them. You know, I, I send them to you know where who would have it because you know. It keeps them, gives them business, and it makes, you know, it makes a cool cat. You know, you, sooner or later, you're going to turn me into a record. And that's what I want. I want to, I want some new shit. Because uh, believe it or not, I get tired of what I have sometimes. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, I always want new stuff. I know that. You know? <laughs> Same with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. I like, you know, I like it when you, because you come twice a year sometimes. Mm. And yo, stuff you bring is incredible. I have other cats that bring me stuff. It's like stuff incredible, mm. and that's what I like about it. Yeah, you know. Dynaman. Yeah, a little strange story. You know, that's the, one of the originals that Tommy Boy had in the office. And I always wanted that. I so, thought, you know, when they went out of business or they were moving on the other side, they, uh, a boy called me up from Tommy Boy. I'm going to leave his name out. And he goes, yo, you still interested in that uh, Tommy Boy, right? Oh, I mean, uh, thing I said, Hell yeah. He goes, yo, you got, I got a, I'm going to, he basically said, yo, I want to suck your dick. So I paused for a second. So I said, does it have to be my dick? Go ahead and get somebody to suck, you know, get somebody in place. He said, yeah, it's okay. So, you know, I used to do the gay circuit when I did the house. So I worked in the record store and I had a, one of my boys that was like hard up. So I kind of connected both of them, and then he said, yo, come get the sign. So I came and got my sign, and stuff, and that's how it's sitting up there right now. You know, I love, I have to get a fix. It costs like $75 to get a fix. I'm just too lazy to take it over there. But once I move, I'm just going to go downstairs and I'm going to get it fixed and stuff.
you know, stuff like that, so, you know, it's a big part of history. So, personally, what's the most valuable record to you? Like um, in style? Um, in terms of style or in ter terms of taste? If you had to pick out one record and go on an island, I mean, you live on an island, but <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> Quick. If I had one style, I'd say, well, you know what? I have to say house. I, 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 I love hip hop, I love breaks, I love all types of music, but if I something I had to listen to every damn day, I'll say house. I don't know what song, but you know, it'll be house. Okay. Yeah, I can go over the nice house too. That's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, do you have a strange uh, sto story of uh, digging? Like, wh where was the strangest place where you digged records? Um, Dig for records? No, I haven't really dug any weird places, you know what I'm saying, flea markets, you know, just stuff, these are friends' houses. That's why I like doing, I used to go to my older friends' houses, you know, come over, you know, they used to smoke, do whatever. Uh, I'll be digging in their mom's records, pulling stuff out. You know, that's why, you know, I was never really into girls when I was growing up. I was more into the records. I was kind of a late bloomer with women. Just because of y'all, I was, yeah, I wanted the records, you know. You know, I was more concerned about DJing, you know, and, and you know, having the new stuff. You know, new rap, new R&B, new, you know, soundtracks. I, I'm crazy, I love soundtracks. And then, uh, you know, and then actually getting to play them out. You know, and that was the cool part. I'll show you some hot records. You yeah. want to see some hot records? Of course, yeah. uh, of course Like I said, this place is like Stevie Wonder can come here and pull out a number one, you know, hot ass break beat. Because there's so much of it around. You mean, that's another reason why people are like coming here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this is, this is a box I think you brought some stuff for me. This is some of the stuff I haven't even put in yet. Let's see. This stuff Dan gave me. <coughs> that's Cigarillo. Trust me, all these are hot records. This has got like two album covers, the same person. <coughs> they did that a lot. Same album, different covers. Yeah, I'm gonna skip through all of this here. All the stuff. What's what kind of records do you like more, like 45s or LPs? Um, 45s is the end thing right now. I have so many 45s. I was always collecting 45s. It's like the new hot thing right now. But um, then again, you know, sometimes you know, I like playing. I like playing everything. I like certain times of the year, like Halloween. I like playing house. You know, because it's just always good around Halloween. You know. Jimi Hendrix Live, there's some hot shit on there. And I got Serato Records. You know. Serato Records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I'll show you a hot Serato. shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you a hot Serato Record, though. Come on. Let me see what I'm This is hot. The Cigarillo. think about records what is the thing you remember is it labels or is it covers or tracks it's, or names or it, it's funny 
I, I say if I have to, what I remember the most is album covers. But that's not true in all cases. Sometimes I remember labels. And, you know, very few I remember names. But most of the time, um, it's album covers. But see, when I started DJing on the computer, that was like hard for some of those old school cats because we're, vi we we're visual DJs. You know, man, that, you weren't even thinking at the time. It's just your mind was, was looking for an Apache <laughs> or whatever. You know, your mind was just going for it. Now we had to actually know the names because sometimes you're playing a song, you didn't even know the name. You just knew the album cover. Yeah. So now, it, you know, back then the album covers were, you know, it was just the names. Now you can put the artwork in it. So it's a lot easier. I can just flip for the album covers. But it, for a quick hot minute, you got to actually remember the name. So that was the hardest thing for me because mm -hmm. I, knew, I knew I had it in there. But I didn't know where it was because <laughs> my mind was looking for the damn album cover. But you know, now that you know they took care of those problems, you know, you can put the artwork in. Uh, so it's a lot easier for us. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. What What do you play when you play out? Like, do you play your original vinyls, or do you play reissues, or do you play digital? See when. Uh, what, what see, see, I have to just. <laughs> You see, I have this discussion with a lot of people. See, I do both, but most of what we do is the computer. Because the computer allows me to bring all my shit. Okay? And the ultimate goal is for the customers, people in the club, to have the best experience. So I want to bring you the hottest shit. Because this time you go to the club, you're like, you're looking for a record. And it's sitting right there by your stereo. So it, this allows you to bring all your stuff. And there's times where, back in the day, where people hired me, I thought it was a house party. It turned out to be hip-hop. So, you know, then you kind of scramble to get records. Now this allows you to bring, you know, there's no mistakes, you're there. And... Uh, And vinyl, we bring out, like, you know, there's parties in the city that we bring records out, 45 parties that we bring records and stuff. And also, you know, I, I think, like, if you bring out vinyl, it should be for more money. Because, for one, now vinyl prices are outrageous. You know, sometimes you, have, you bring a crate and you got 100 Gs in there sometimes. So, you know, I don't want to bring out 100 Gs and I'm only getting paid $500. You know, it's a lot of money, especially if you're flying, because back in the day, before 9-11, you used to, the trick was you bought an extra airline ticket, put your two crates on it. After 9-11, you had to check everything in the belly. And yo, everybody was missing records then, because the records come up missing. And then that's when Serato and Tracty came out, and it kind of like solved that problem. You know, because then you weren't missing records. Yeah, oh. whole you know, when you come home. But y'all, honest, I like playing records. If I had the choice, at every part, I'll, I'll bring records. But then I don't have a luxury of bringing 10 guys with me no more that carry the crates. Because now promoters don't want to pay the extra guys to carry stuff. They say, yo, just bring the vinyl, you know, the, the laptop. Okay, that's cool. And a lot of clubs, you're up in the air. So if, if to me, playing vinyl, it should be on ground level where the crowd can see it because that's when you get most effective if, you, if the the people can't see you playing vinyl they don't know if you're playing computers or vinyl yeah but you hear, hear the difference i hear the difference yes you can <laughs> you, you can i, I can definitely because you know my all my files are called hd and the crisp you know if something's missing a little bass we he can, yeah, you can definitely tell. I mean, it's only me. It's yeah. No, you can tell. You can yeah. tell. Because there's certain times, like, we crisp stuff up, and then we play the vinyl, and then my boy would say, yo, how come it don't sound the same? Because, you know, I, we beefed it up. Of course. You know, so I understand what you're saying. But, you know, I think vinyl should be played, you know, if club owners and whoever promoters start paying you correctly, you know, then, you, you know, it's worth bringing out the vinyl. 
But then again, there also it has to be a spot where people can see you because you know people like seeing that. Like at the park jams that Christy does, you know, you know you're on stage, you can actually see your close up, you can see the records mm -hmm. and stuff. So, you know. Oh, you got the back to pack. You can <laughs> carry all oh, the yeah, records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? What's the baddest break you got? <laughs> I don't know, man. I got a lot of a lot of good breaks, man. I, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say. I know. And all the things I'm asking you. <laughs> and, and, and that's hard, you know. And that's that's uh, also like. It depends on what mood I'm in, because you know I mean, I'm. I'm asking you now. <laughs> I, want, I want a fast track, you know. Uh. You know, I like some of the classics. It's some of my favorite, like Funky Sensation and R.B. Love is a message I really love. You know, for the B-boys, you know, there's a lot of harder stuff. Some soundtrack stuff I like. Uh, you know, some of the stuff you run is some good stuff that you run. I like. But you know, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint what one track is. You know, a house. Some of my house, my favorite house tracks is by Danny Tenegra. He does some like Lost and Found, it's, like incredible. You know, a lot of people like Elements, but that's like on the commercial side. He did a lot of stuff before that. It was like incredible. And uh, you know, it all depends. Mm. So. Okay. And how do you? sort your records like you got all these records here um how i saw them is by label it's easier to do by label like right now when i got in the, the top shelf it's all strictly rhythm the black right under there is columbia you know def jam mca sugar hill I, you know i put it like that because it's easy because also stuff now i remember stuff by label like when you say apache i already know it's on pride records so i go right to it or the Sugar Hill, you know, boom. And it also makes it easy, like, for you when you come over. Like, I know it's a lot of people like when, because a lot of people like coming through the bookcases. So, you know, to see all the Sugar Hill records, because I have every one. So it's like, you can actually see all the records, or the, all the Def Jam records, or the Profile records. So a lot of people like going through like that. And then the cabinets, I got 45s. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in the process of moving, so everything's like boxed up. But you know how I had everything before; everything's out. It was crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what does your wife say to all of your records when you're moving? <laughs> you know what? I have to say she's a trooper, because I say, yo, most girls they hang out for three years, and three years they tell you stop moving, you know, you ain't using all of this, move, sell some of it. I'm like, yo. I already went through all that, and this girl stuck with me, been together 17 years, and she loves music just as much as I do. She had just as many videos as I had, so when we got together, you know, it was like a perfect fit. She loves, there's times that we had $10,000, I made $10,000 a night, and next day I'll spend $10,000 on records, and she wouldn't even question it, and sit there for hours while I'm digging, you know? <laughs> so. She's a keeper, and she looks good. <laughs> so, you know, oh, I can't complain. No, she's the best. Huh? Yeah. So you know, it's hard to find girls that you know they have a short attention span when it comes to that stuff. Especially if you're in somewhere nice and dirty and stuff. They might go into there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The right. Uh, I'm the same. <laughs> So what else? Um, doot doot doot. What was the worst thing that happened to you with records? Like melting records, stolen cover uh, without records, or lost records, or whatever? See, when I was younger, you see, I was a late bloomer to smoking and drinking. So when I was like in the 80s, like 86, 87, I had a New Year's party, got drunk, and a credit records came up missing. So after that, I didn't drink no more until much late, into the late 90s. So I, I never liked losing the records at the party. <laughs> that made me bad, so it was some good shit too. So uh, I never drank after that. And then, you know, after my ex-wife, we broke up. 
that's when I started smoking and drinking and you know and plus I was young so you know I could take it more than that back then I I was young you know uh, to me the records were more valuable than drinking anyway so Do you remember your first record you bought or you owned? Could, okay, I could tell you, but I could tell you the first few was the basics, Good Times, Change Your Up Express, Numbers, uh, Bar Caves. You know, I, I have a lot of young dudes that come here, they can't fan them because when I was growing up and these other cats were doing it, there was no such thing as hip hop, no rap music. So we took old, you know, breaks. And I learned from all these older cats, Tone, Bam, because, you know, back then it was playing on radio, so you heard different breaks in different areas. So I started collecting tapes and going to different parties, and everybody played different stuff. And like, Brooklyn used to play Love is the Mission Slow Down and stuff. You know, Bronx played it different, Queens played it different, but there was a lot of breaks that other DJs were playing and stuff. It was cool. So you was always into breaks, like from the beginning? Not, not really, breaks. I, 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 was a, I like doing other parties. I was also big in the house world with Vasquez, Danny Tenegra, Calderon, Tony Humphreys. I was, you know, I, I like all types of music. You know, I used to do Hell's Angel parties. You know, as long as I play good music, you know, I don't mind playing. You know, that's what, you know, a real DJ is supposed to do, you know. Yo, you pay me, I'll do a funeral. I don't care. In fact, me and Tone did a funeral uh, uh, last year. A funeral party. And it was pretty good. Oh, who was it? Uh, <laughs> one of Tone's boys and stuff. Yeah, it was up in Connecticut. All right. Yeah. I see. But, you know, I and, and another thing, when I was doing you know, parties, I hate having somebody coming up and saying, yo, you got this record. And I don't have it. So that made me mad. So that made me collect everything. You know, so, because I didn't want nobody to come up and say, yo, you got this record. And I don't have it. It's one thing if you have it home. But I don't have that record. So, you know, I, that's why I wind up collecting everything. You know, I have all done the sound library records, soundtracks, 45s, you know, flex records, you know, so everybody. If it's fly, I have it. You know, and it's just that me on the East Coast. You got Danny Dan the Beat Man. You got Kenny Dope. You got my boy Lord Finesse. You know, you got a lot of you know guys, so on and so on that we dig out here. You know, you got Forrest Gump. You know, you got a lot of diggers out here. And how was it like in the early '80s? Like when I grew up with hip hop. I try to keep my secrets with records, like I sticked, uh, pu put stickers on labels and stupid stuff like that. Did you do that or? Nah, you know what? Uh, I never really got into that really, because I started having a lot of stuff, so I had a different outlook of, 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 of you know, if I bring you up to my level, you know, you're gonna find some records that I don't have. So, uh, I, I look at it as an advantage to me because you're gonna turn eventually you're gonna turn me on to some hot, sh hot stuff. And so you know it was a benefit to me to tell you who it is. But you know all, you know, some cats are on all different levels. So, you, you know I if you're on level say 40, I say I'm on 40 and you're on level 10. You know I try to bring you up to 11, you know 11, 12, and gradually get you up there because. You know, even now when I you know, I get records, there's stuff that I recognize that I passed up back in the day because my mind wasn't like where it is now of beat collecting. So I was like, wow, how the hell did I pass this up? And you know, I wasn't my level wasn't where where that, you know that record was wasn't where I was. You know, so I wasn't really it it was invisible to me. Now I pick them up all day because I know about it. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah, now I'm same, but yeah, 
Well, yeah, I was different. Like it was, <laughs> it was competition. Yeah. <laughs> but and you know, really collecting, collecting, collecting records. You know, everybody had beats and stuff. The all the all these hardcore beats and stuff to come on to later on to the scene. You know what I'm saying? You know, there was a few cats that had you know sprinkle of stuff, but it ain't like today. You know, there's stores that are dedicated just for breaks and stuff. Yeah. And that's cool. I like that. Yeah. And, you know, I tell cats, like, everybody say, yo, I got everything. Nah, man, you don't have everything. Because, yo, I've been collecting records for, what, almost 40 years? And there's still cats like you that come over with a whole knapsack of stuff I never even heard of. You know? So, yo, it, it, I got a lot of records. So if I don't have that stuff, how do you have it? You know what I'm saying? Or how do you have everything? You can't have everything. It's impossible. <laughs> but that's a good thing about it. <laughs> yeah, I, yo, it's an endless, it's an endless job. I'm so happy that it's not ending. Yeah, yeah it would take a couple <laughs> of lifetimes to click all the records on the planet. You know. Cigarillo. Der Mann. Das Cigarillo. The ball has got some hot stuff on it. Cigarette love. 